let's take a look at the cubital fossa. This image shows the anterior view of the elbow region where the skin has been removed to reveal the superficial structures of the cubital fossa. The cubital fossa is a triangular depression located in front of the elbow joint. In this specimen, we are observing the contents of the superficial fascia, which forms a part of the roof of the cubital fossa. Let's orient ourselves by identifying its boundaries, superior, inferior, medial, and lateral. We can recognize the superior end by locating the biceps brachii, a superficial muscle of the arm. If we trace it downward, the biceps brachii continues as the tendon of biceps and the bicipital aponeurosis, also known as the Lacertus fibrosis. Although the tendon of biceps lies deep within the fossa and isn't clearly visible here, the bicipital aponeurosis can be appreciated. It separates the superficial structures from the deep structures, reinforcing the fossa and providing protection to the brachial artery and median nerve that lie beneath it. Among the superficial veins, we can see the cephalic vein on the lateral side and the basilic vein on the medial side. These two veins are connected by the median cubital vein, which runs obliquely across the fossa. This median cubital vein is the preferred site for venipuncture and intravenous cannulation because it lies superficial to the bicipital aponeurosis, making it stable and less likely to move during needle insertion. Additionally, the aponeurosis offers protection to deeper structures like the brachial artery and median nerve during such procedures. Next, coming to the cutaneous nerves, on the medial side, we can identify the termination of the medial cutaneous nerve of the arm and the medial cutaneous nerve of the forearm. On the lateral side, passing just behind the cephalic vein, is the lateral cutaneous nerve of the forearm, which represents the terminal continuation of the musculocutaneous nerve. So this image beautifully demonstrates the superficial anatomy of the cubital fossa and its clinical importance, particularly in venipuncture procedures. Now this image shows the same specimen after the superficial fascia and veins have been removed to expose the deeper structures of the cubital fossa. Here, we can clearly identify the lateral cutaneous nerve of the forearm, which becomes superficial after crossing over the biceps brachii muscle. The tendon and aponeurosis of the biceps are now distinctly visible. Notice how the bicipital aponeurosis blends seamlessly with the deep fascia of the forearm, reinforcing the roof of the cubital fossa and separating the superficial from the deep structures. You can also observe another cutaneous nerve here, the posterior cutaneous nerve of the forearm, which is a branch of the radial nerve. This nerve pierces the lateral head of the triceps to become superficial and supplies sensation to the back of the forearm extending up to the wrist. Additionally, you can notice the cut ends of a perforating vein along with the basilic vein in this region. Next, after carefully removing the bicipital aponeurosis, we can now observe the deep structures, the true contents of the cubital fossa, along with its clearly defined boundaries. Let's first recall the boundaries of the cubital fossa. Medially, it is formed by the pronator teres muscle. Laterally, by the brachioradialis muscle. The base is represented by an imaginary line connecting the two humeral epicondyles, and the apex is located where the medial and lateral boundaries converge. Now, moving on to the contents of the cubital fossa, arranged from medial to lateral. Medially, we find the median nerve, which passes between the two heads of the pronator teres muscle as it enters the forearm. Next lies the brachial artery accompanied by its vene comitantes. Within the fossa, the brachial artery divides into its two terminal branches, the radial and ulnar arteries. The ulnar artery takes a deeper course, while the radial artery runs more superficially and can be identified in the lower part of the cubital fossa. 
Then we can see the tendon of the biceps brachii, along with the cut edge of the bicipital aponeurosis, which was previously covering these deep structures. And finally, on the lateral side, the superficial branch of the radial nerve can be seen. Now, after removing the contents of the cubital fossa, we can clearly appreciate its boundaries and the underlying muscular floor. Let's begin with the medial boundary. It is formed by the pronator teres muscle, which takes its origin partly from the common flexor origin on the medial supracondylar ridge and the medial epicondyl of the humerus. From here, the pronator teres runs obliquely towards the radial side, crossing the fossa to reach the lateral aspect of the forearm. On the lateral side, the boundary is formed by the brachioradialis muscle. With the biceps brachii now removed, only the cut end of its tendon can be seen lying deep within the fossa. Beneath it, the brachialis muscle is now well exposed. This is a deep muscle of the arm and forms the upper part of the floor of the cubital fossa. Notice how its fibers converge deeply to insert into the ulnar tuberosity. The proximal limit of the cubital fossa, also called the base of the triangular space, is represented by an imaginary line connecting the medial and lateral epicondyles of the humerus. In this final stage of dissection, the boundaries of the cubital fossa have been retracted to clearly expose the remaining floor muscles. Just beside the cut end of the biceps tendon, we can now see the supinator muscle, which forms the lower part of the floor of the cubital fossa. This muscle is pierced by a branch of the radial nerve, an important landmark to note. Adjacent to the tendon of the brachialis, the radial nerve can be observed dividing into its two terminal branches. The posterior interosseous nerve, also known as the deep branch of the radial nerve, and the superficial branch. The posterior interosseous nerve passes through the supinator muscle to enter the posterior extensor compartment of the forearm, where it supplies the extensor muscles. With this, the demonstration of the cubital fossa is complete, showing its layers from superficial to deep, the boundaries, floor muscles, and the important neurovascular structures that pass through this vital anatomical region.